Hey everybody, and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on probability, rates, and expected value. And it's going to be a problem solving video. Let's get started. In our first example, we have a chart and we have a graph. And it says this data chart shows that the percentage of women and men who have had their first child at a given age is. So let's take a look at the chart. Here we have under 15 years old, under 20 years old. We have a range from 20 to 24, 25 to 29, 30 to 35, and so on. These values are the percentages or the probabilities of women who have had their first child at these certain ages. So here from range 20 to 24 years old, about 32% of women have their first child at this age range. That's 0.32 or 32%. Similarly, at over 45, only about 1% or 0.01 of women are having children at that age. There's also men listed on here, and you might be thinking, well, men don't have children. But in fact, they do. They may not give birth, but they do actually have children, just like women do. And so we have some values here for them as well. For example, men between the ages of 25 and 29 can expect to have their first child at a rate of about 18% or 0.18%. So that's what this table tells us. Now the question here is, what is the probability that a random male had his first child at age 25 to 29? So what we do to answer this question is we come down here and we find males, and we find ages 25 to 29. And that's this value right here, this 0.18. And that tells us that the probability of any random male to have a child in this age range is 0.18 or about 18 percent. This is a graph that describes this chart. So you can see here that for women and men under, under 15, our females are actually giving birth at a slightly higher rate than males are experiencing their first child, and that kind of makes a little bit of sense. And you have to think that this is worldwide as well. Women are the kind of uh, greenish color, and men are sort of this um, sandy brown color on the graph. And then also for females and males under 20, we have about 14% of females having their first child under 20, and we have about 5% of males. And so we're seeing that here as well, 14% of females and 5% of males. So this graph actually represents all the data that we see here. All right, so that's our first example of probability. Example two. Suppose New York City reports that 521,093 people drive over the Brooklyn Bridge each year. New York City has a population of 8.2 million. San Francisco reports that 223,567 people drive over the Golden Gate Bridge each year. And San Francisco has a population of 812, 826,000 people. We also know, of course, that there are 365 days in each year. Now, one of the things you'll notice about this problem so far is it's giving you a lot of numbers and a lot of information. But what you need to do is focus on what exactly is the question asking and which of these numbers is relevant to answering each of the questions. The first question says, how many people in San Francisco drove over the bridge per day? How many people drove over the bridge per day? All right, so first we better find San Francisco. That's right here. And this is the number of people in San Francisco that drove over their Golden Gate Bridge. And that's per year. And we want per day. So we're going to take that number and we're going to divide it by 365. And that gives us around 613 people per day. That's the rate. So that's that first question. Notice we only needed to use this value to answer that first question. Now the second question says, what is the bridge driving rate per 1,000 people for the New York City Brooklyn Bridge? All right, well, to answer this question, we actually need two steps. First, we need to figure out what the, dri I'm sorry, the bridge driving rate is in general. In other words, how many bridge crossings are there per person. Once we know the per person, we can multiply that by 1,000 to get what it is per 1,000 people. 
All right, so which numbers do we need to use now? Well, we need the bridge driving for New York City Brooklyn Bridge. So let's get some of those pieces of information. We know that 521,093 people drive over the Brooklyn Bridge each year. But this is a per person type of situation. That's why we're using the word rate here. Now the question's asking per thousand people, but we're gonna find it per person first and then multiply by a thousand. So to get the rate per person, we actually have to divide the total number of people who drive over the bridge each year by the total number of people that are there completely. So that's why we divide the total number of people who drive over the bridge by the total number of people who are in New York City. And that gives us 0.0635. That's basically the rate per person. So approximately 0.0635 people drive over that bridge per year related to the number of people total. And you might be thinking, wow, that's kind of strange sounding. But if you think about it, relative to the 8.2 million people that are there, only about half a million of them actually use that bridge. A lot of them may use other means of transportation and go in other directions. So per person, the rate of use of that bridge is actually not that high. And that's why we got this particular rate. It's about 6.3% or 0.0635. Now that's per person. If we want to know the rate per thousand people, we take the rate that we just calculated per person and we multiply it by a thousand. And that tells us for every thousand people in New York City, about 63 and a half of them will drive over that bridge. So that's the answer to that question. That is the rate per thousand people. All right, how about example three? This example focuses on theoretical probability, which is often sometimes called classical probability, really depending on your textbook. In this case, suppose you have a bag of colored blocks, and six of those blocks are yellow, nine of the blocks are pink, 15 of the blocks are purple, and five of the blocks are orange. The first question is, what is the probability of reaching into the bag and grabbing an orange block? All right, well, the first thing we need to know is how many blocks are in this bag altogether. If we've got six that are yellow, nine that are pink, 15 that are purple, and five that are orange, that's 35 blocks altogether. We also know that just five of them happen to be orange. So the probability of choosing an orange block is five out of the 35 blocks that we have. So that's the answer there. The second question is, what is the probability of grabbing a block that is not a pink block, so not pink? There's actually two different ways to solve this. Again, we know we have 35 blocks total. We know that nine of them are pink, because that's what we're being told. Nine of them are pink. Well, if nine out of the 35 are pink, that means that 26 of them, all the remaining blocks, are not pink. So the probability of getting a block that's not pink is 26 out of 35. The second way of doing this is actually to subtract the probability of grabbing a pink block from one. The probability of grabbing a pink block is nine out of 35 because there's nine pink blocks and 35 blocks total. If we subtract this from one, we'll get the same answer. Remember, when we subtract fractions, we need a common denominator, unless you're using decimals, which is fine too. That's why this one turned into a 35 over 35, then I subtracted the nine over 35, and I got the same answer, which is good because that's the correct answer. So these are examples of theoretical or classical probability. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this portion. I have two more examples that I wanna give, and I'm gonna give them in part two of what has become a two-part presentation. I'll be back in a second.